Okay, if you're taking any sort of algebra course, I'm talking about things like pre-algebra, algebra one, algebra two, college algebra, it doesn't make a difference. Any math course with algebra in it, you're definitely going to run into problems like this. Let me go ahead and read the problem. Of course, we'll discuss it here in a second. The problem is the square of a number plus two is 38. What is the number or numbers? Now, I don't want to give you too many hints here because I want to give you an opportunity to solve this all on your own. If you know the answer, go ahead and put the uh, put your solutions into the comment section. Uh, but again, if you're taking algebra, you have to be able to do these type of problems. The skill that we're, gonna, uh, we're talking about here is critical in word problems, solving uh, mathematical word problems, especially algebra word problems, which of course is everyone's favorite thing to do. But anyways, we're going to get to exactly what to do in this particular problem here in a second. But let me just say, say one more thing. Uh, for those of you out there that are just like, I totally don't understand anything. I can't do this. Well, listen, you should stop and just think about this uh, problem, right? Just let's say, uh, you know, if you were able to solve this, you got a thousand dollars. Okay, and you're like, I don't know how to do this problem. But what if someone said, I'll give you a thousand dollars if you can figure this out? Guess what? You'd be more motivated to think about it. You should try to think about this because math is a game of critical thinking and problem solving. So if you put your brain in gear, you'll be surprised how far or how much you can figure out. Even if you don't get the exact answer, you'll be somewhere along some sort of logical path uh, to you know, getting the correct solution. Okay, Even though your work may not be perfect, you're still thinking, and that's always a good thing. Okay, so before we get going, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of TC Math Academy. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher. I've been teaching math for decades. I love teaching math. It is my true passion. And over all those years, I can tell you right now, all students can be successful in mathematics. And I'm especially speaking to those of you out there that are struggling in math. If you think to yourself, I can't do this stuff. I'm terrible at math. I've uh, failed math. I'm just bad at math. Listen, it, it doesn't have to be that way. What you need is encouragement and most importantly, great math instruction, clear, understandable, and comprehensive. So if you need help in your current math course or maybe some sort of special test that you're studying for, something like the GED, SAT, ACT, ASVAB, maybe a teacher certification exam, something with a math section, on it, or if you're homeschooling mathematics, check out my math help program. I'm gonna leave a link to it in the description of this video. I literally have over 100 plus different math courses that span all these categories and much, much more. I'm also gonna leave links to my math notes in the description uh, of this video as well. It's critical that you learn how to take excellent math notes. A lot of students struggle with this, or some, uh, some of you out there actually don't take any math notes at all. So if you improve this, Everything will get much, much better. And if this video helps you out, uh, don't forget to uh, like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go ahead and show you the correct answer and then we're gonna go ahead and get into the actual solution. Okay, so here it is. The square of a number plus two is 38. What is the number? The numbers are actually six and negative six. So if you just gave me like six, well, you would be what? Well, you'd only give me like half of the answer. Now, would I just give you a five out of 10 on your paper? No, I'm nicer than that. I would probably give you maybe an eight out of a 10. Uh, that's pretty generous as well. Then I would tell you, hey, listen, you gotta pay attention. And you would say, oh, I knew that, I knew that, I knew that. That's what a lot of uh, math students do. They're so excited, they, knew exa they know exactly what to do. They rush through the process and they forget all these little critical details that actually count big time in terms of your final correct answer. But anyways, if you actually said six and negative six, that is very impressive, impressive enough for a little happy face and A plus a 100% and some stars so you can celebrate the rest of the day for your awesome work in mathematics. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into uh, how to solve this problem. Really, the skill that we're talking about here is translating. Okay, we're going to translate this verbal phrase. Okay, this, uh, you know, we're just kind of like uh, writing this in English. Okay, English is the language we're, we're expressing this um, situation in. Well, we need to express this in a variable or algebraic way. So really, the topic here is translating. Okay, translating verbal phrases into variable expressions or algebraic equations. All right. And this is uh, the key skill, 
when you are solving word problems. And so a lot of you out there, when I say uh, algebra word problems, you're either going to be excited, but most students are just like, what are you talking about? I don't want to do word problems. Just give me the easy stuff. Well, listen, word problems is mathematics. I mean, that's the whole reason you learn math is to actually solve problems. Okay, so let's go ahead and get into this and uh, show you how we translate this. Well, when you're translating a verbal phrase into an algebraic phrase, you literally have to go word by word. So let's go ahead and do this now. So the, okay, we don't need to really translate that, the squared. So let's just stop with this word right here, the square. What does that mean? Well, uh, if I said, what is three squared? You would say, oh, okay, that's mean, that's when you put the little two up in the right hand corner. Three squared is of course, uh, three times three or nine. So you have to know what this word square means, okay? Two squared, of course, is four or two times two. So the square, well, the square of what? Well, you have to continue to read. So we just know that we're gonna be um, applying this little exponent, this little two exponent to something. So the square of a number. Now here, a number, this is where uh, algebra is going to save us, right? So what is a number? Well, we don't know what a number is, but we have these things in algebra called variables that represent numbers, okay? So like x is a number. What number? Well, it all depends, whatever value you want for x, but this is just a number. And in algebra, you can use any uh, particular variable that you like. You can use x, y, z. Uh, in this case, I use n because I'm expressing a number. That's pretty common, but just make sure you don't use any crazy uh, uh, symbols. Don't make your life too difficult. Just go with um, uh, lowercase uh, variables like x, y, z, a, b, c, or something like this that's kind of logical, n, okay? But again, any um, uh, letter, lowercase letter, or any other type of symbol could represent a variable. All right, so the square of a number. Okay, so now I got this number, and now I'm gonna square it, okay? Just as if I uh, squared three, okay? The square of three, for example, would be what? Three squared. The square of a number would be n squared or x squared. Uh, what you choose for a variable really doesn't make a difference, but this is probably the uh, part that can, would confuse uh, students the most. Okay, so the square of a number we have here, n squared or x squared, however you want to uh, write that, plus, well, that's pretty easy. That is the plus sign right here, plus what? Well, plus 2, right? So let's just stop and pause. The square of a number plus 2, this is the square of a number plus 2. We're looking pretty good. Now we have this word is. Now anytime when you're translating a verbal phrase into an algebraic phrase and you come across the word is, this is always the equal sign, okay? So it's is or is equal to. So the square root of a number plus two is or is equal to, so we're gonna write the, the equal uh, symbol there, is what? 38, and there you go. So now we translated this verbal phrase into a variable uh, phrase or a variable expression or more precisely, an algebraic equation. Now, uh, it's up to you to be able to solve this thing. Okay, so we have n squared plus 2 is equal to 38. So the next phase of this problem is to solve for n. So let's go and take a look at that work right now. So this happens to be what we call a quadratic equation, right? So we have this variable to the second power. To, I don't want to be overly technical here, but this is a second degree polynomial. What you need to understand is this. If you have an n squared or an x squared, something like this, where a variable like abc or nx uh, to the second power, this is a quadratic, let's just go ahead and spell this out here, quadratic equation. And all quadratic equations, all of them will always have two solutions. Now, if you don't understand quadratic equations, I can absolutely guarantee that you're going to be studying these in your algebra course, okay? Now, some of you have already studied this, so this is just a quick review on this stuff. But let's go ahead and continue forward with solving this quadratic equation. Okay, so what we wanna do is get the n squared all by itself on one side of the equation. So if I asked you to solve for n, if I had n plus two is equal to 38, what would you do? Well, you subtract two from both sides of the equation. So here, uh, basically, you're kind of solving for n squared, so we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. Then you can just always remember you kind of add down in a column manner, 
hopefully at this uh, level of, um, you, know, you know, those of you out there watching this video are already, you know, beyond basic um, equation solving. Now, if all of this right here is like overwhelming, you're like, oh, I'm going to be confused about this stuff. Well, listen, that's good that you know what you're confused about because I'm telling you then, oh, you don't understand this? Then you need to work on equations. So let me give you a couple quick recommendations before we finish this thing up. Check out like my pre-algebra course or my algebra course, right? That's probably your best bet if you really, really want to learn this stuff. Okay, so let's go ahead and continue forward. So I'm going to subtract 2 from both sides of the equation. Now I have n squared is equal to 36, right? 38 minus 2 is 36. So how do I solve for n when I have n squared? Well, what we have to do is take the square root of both sides. Anytime you take the square root of a variable like n squared, the answer is n, right? So if I'm trying to solve for uh, x and you have x squared, just take the square root of that and you get x. Okay, now here's the deal though. When you take the square root of the left-hand side, you always have to take the square root of the other side. So here, we're just going to take the square root of both sides. We're going to get n, uh, square root of n squared is n, is equal to positive negative 36. So here is a really, really critical deal. If I said, let's just use a, well, we'll use 36. So if I said, hey, what's the square root of 36? And it had nothing to do with the equations. And if you said, oh, the answer is 6, you would be correct. This right here, in and of itself, is something called the principal square root which is basically the positive um, uh, version or the, just the positive uh, uh, root for um, the square root. Okay, so we know that what's a square root, by the way? Let's just make sure we understand that. It's the number times itself. Okay, we're asking ourselves, hey, what number times itself gets us back to 36? So 6 times 6 gets us back to 36. So that's why 6 is the square root of 36. But that's not the only number, right? Negative 6 times negative 6 is a positive 36. So negative 6 is an answer as well. That's why we have n is equal to positive and negative 6. But don't confuse the principal square root. So if you're just doing a bunch of problems and I gave you this as uh, the question, hey, what's the square root of 36? And you gave me 6. That's technically correct. That would be the principal square root. But when you're trying to um, uh, solve equations, when you're taking the square root, when you're dealing with solving equations, you're trying to find the roots or the zeros of the equation, uh, you got to add that negative in. So n is equal to positive and negative 6. Now let's go ahead and check our answer here just to make sure that we are good to go with our final solutions. So here is the equation, right? A number squared, all right, This here is the square of a number plus 2 is 38. The square of a number plus 2 is 38. So we're saying that number here is n is equal to both positive and negative 6. So let's just go ahead and plug in for n a 6, and then we'll also check negative 6. So let's go ahead and plug in a 6, 4n. So that's going to be 6 squared, which of course is what? 36 plus 2. So what's 36 plus 2? Is that 38? Well, 36 plus 2 is 38. 38 is equal to 38. That is a true statement. So this is a verified solution. All right, let's go ahead and check negative 6 now. So negative 6 squared, guess what? Negative 6 squared is negative 6 times negative 6, which is a positive 36. So positive 36 plus 2 is 38. Okay, so again, 38 is equal to 38. Now, a lot of you out there are saying to yourself, boy, this is a lot of redundant work. Yeah, I'm like, oh, my goodness. You really got to do all these extra steps, da, 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 da. Listen, I get it. Yes, yes, you really do. Okay, math is a... A science of precision, okay? You want to get the right answer. And be grateful that mathematics is a science of precision because, you know, all those things that we use in our daily life, like airplanes and cars and uh, things like that, can you imagine if the engineers were like, yeah, well, I think that's kind of like good enough. And then would you get in an airplane that where engineers built it? We're like, well, now nah, let's just round off. Let's say, uh, nah, we don't need that other solution. Listen, I don't know about you, but I wouldn't get in those airplanes. Uh, or rocket ships, or, or you know, and think about it. You know, our cell phones, and the internet, it, things have to be precise. So yes, mathematics is a discipline of precision. But um, anyways, the whole idea here is to really learn mathematics one skill at a time. Okay, so if all, if any part of what I was doing here is confusing to you, 
just figure out, hey, I, I don't understand this, uh, you know, and then work on it. Now, if you don't understand all of this, again, I would suggest um, you know, my pre-algebra course, if that's uh, too advanced for you, I actually have a little mini course called a Math Foundations course, which is a nice basic three chapter course, more like elementary level mathematics. So find your starting point and build up from there. Also, I have a ton of additional uh, videos on YouTube that cover this stuff and a lot more. So anyways, hopefully this video helps you out. If that is the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.